Can you see me? Can you see me? So measure to the top of the saddle, right there. Measure the top of the handlebars, right there. That gives you a difference, saddle to handlebars. Then measure brake levers to the tip of your saddle, just like that. Bike vlogger here. Topic of the day is bike fit. I'm gonna talk a little bit about bike fit. Bike fit's really important because uh, if your uh, bike doesn't fit right, you'll be uncomfortable. <laughs> As you can tell, it's pretty snowy. So I got my studded tires and uh, whew, I got a tank of a bike going right now. I got all my cameras. Uh, I might not be using all these cameras in future videos, but I thought, hey, let's do it one more time since it's all snowy. Snowy! Woo! And it's cold. Oh, the final countdown. So, looked like the light was changing for me, and then it didn't. Oh, wait, there we go. Pretty sweet. All right. Okay, here we go. So it's actually not that cold out. Um, it's hovering around freezing. So unfortunately, that means a lot of this stuff is melting, which also means we'll have ice. So not looking forward to that. Why is this guy stopping in the street? Okay, I don't know why that guy was stopping in the street there. He wanted to talk to that guy, I guess. All right. So, anyway. Whew. Look at all the cars. Oh my gosh. It's still snowing a little bit, but it's not that bad. The roads are clear. It is late January, so that means uh, this might be the only snow we get this winter. Let's go this way. I'm curious to see if I can find a road that is not plowed. Looks like this alleyway is plowed though. So I think everything's been plowed. Woo! So yeah, I have studded tires. That's what that noise is that you're hearing probably overkill right now but it can't be can't be too safe in the winter time uh, especially when you're going across bridges and stuff it just gets really dicey oh isn't that pretty look at all those trees with the snow on them isn't that pretty Woo. so bike fit bike fit so I'm going to sh I'm going to explain Basically, the two main points, which if you know you're, if you're an uh, avid cyclist, you know, you've been doing it for a while, you may have a couple bikes, you probably all, you probably know all about bike fit, but um, the two most, uh, this way, the two biggest things are uh, kind of like the height, you're sitting off the ground relative to the pedals. So basically the height above the pedals. Your saddle height, that is. And then uh, your reach. How far you have to reach forward to uh, reach the brake levers. So, now, I have bikes that are similar. Uh, very similar, in fact. And it just so happens this is my winter bike. This is a bike I don't use a whole heck of a lot, except for icy days and days like today, maybe. 
I'm following the the uh, track of the cars here. Sometimes that works. Sometimes that's kind of dangerous because uh, if you don't have really good hey, look at this, nobody is over here. If you don't have really good control. Nobody's uh, ridden down here yet. Woo! All the way to the end. All the way to the end. Yes. So let's do it here, why don't we? Yeah, we just came from that way. Let's go ahead and do our uh, spiel right here. Oh man, it's really wet. It's a wet snow, really good for probably doing a snowman or something. Let's stop right here. Bike blogger here, let's talk about bike fit for a minute. There's my bike, Surly Cross Check. Equipped with fenders and studded tires, it's a full-on winter bike. So, bike fit. Number one, measure the top of the saddle to the floor. Number two, measure top of the handlebars to the floor. Number three, subtract those two. Get your difference between the top of the saddle and the top of the handlebars. That gives you your drop. Your drop! Number three, or number four, I guess. Last one, measure the tip of the saddle to your brake levers directly. So those two things, the drop and the reach, that is your bike fit. Let's go for a ride. Da -da -da -da, final countdown. All right then. All right then. Here we go on the Bike Vlogger Show. Okay, okay. Squeaky, squeaky. Here we go. Here we go out into the road. Out into the road. Ugh. Straight on into the road. Do ba do do ba do. I'm gonna head into the. Uh, oh my gosh, there's like all this snow on my toes. It looks kind of funny. Okay, let's get into the park here. Into the park we go. Ride ourselves through the park a little bit. So yeah, so bike fit, pretty simple. You just got your drop and your reach. Uh, there are a lot of more um, specific measurements you can do, uh, like when you're buying a bike frame. But generally, you can make it work. You know, you change out different parts. So again, if you're an avid cyclist, you probably already have several parts. You know, like you would switch out the uh, stem, maybe the handlebars, although that's a little more work. Um, it is certainly easier to shorten the reach from basically the handlebar to the frame uh, without messing with your brake cables and your uh, shifting cables. So that is obviously the way to go. However, a lot of people end up buying frame sizes that might be, you know, what would some would say be too small for them, but you can still make that work. Um, if the frame is too big for you, there's not much you can do. So it's probably actually better if you're unsure to buy one frame size down. So if you think you might be a medium or a large, maybe go with the medium. Now, interestingly, interestingly, if you get a bigger frame, I guess unless it's a really weird size, really large frame because you're a, a uh, really tall person or have a long, uh, long legs or a long torso or something um, and you have to get it custom made or something uh, generally no matter what frame size you get it's the same price however I think I have seen in some cases if you get like an extra small adult size frame it might be cheaper um, now keep in mind also if you're riding a road bike or something sometimes they may come with different wheel sizes I've noticed that sometimes like um, on a really small frame it might have 650 was it 650B oh, instead of 700C or something? So um, you just gotta pay attention to the specs a little because 700C is essentially standard. It's been that way for decades now, really. It's not really a new thing anymore. Um, so yeah, so if you're, if you're not sure if you should get a, an extra small or a small, you may want to get a small if, you know, it has regular size wheels on it. 
I say regular size wheels, but you know, there are a lot of options, of course, for what 650B or whatever it is. It's just, uh, you know, it's not as common. I don't think it is, at least, at least not for road bikes. Although maybe it's becoming more common because they're a little smaller, um, what is it, smaller bead seat diameter or something like that. So in other words, you can fit larger tires on it. So that's actually a benefit. And so that's why you might see it on like some uh, cyclocross or um, adventure or uh, gravel bikes. I think that's what they, I think that's what they call them nowadays, gravel bikes. Car behind me and there's a guy running in the street. Um, woo. Going to go straight here. Oh my, so on our way to work today, just wanted to give you a little shot of the snow because I have a whole playlist on snow bike rides, but you know, I don't live in a very snowy climate, so you know, I don't live in Minnesota or whatever, so this is actually kind of, kind of fun, you know, for a day or two. And then it gets kind of old, <laughs> you know, if you're dealing with ice or whatever. Because I live in, uh, I live near sea level, I don't live in the mountains. And I live kind of in the central plains of the United States of America. So, we do definitely get cold weather, because we're in the middle of, middle of a, a continent here, but, uh, I don't know. It seems to fluctuate every year. I mean, I think it was two years ago that we had, I don't know, two weeks where it never got above freezing. You know, like there was ice on the road consistently, you know, not even melted ice for, uh, not even at day, in the middle of the day, um, for, uh, ugh, for, um, oh, I don't, yeah, like it was like two weeks or something. But like right now, you can see the roads are all wet because it's melting. Although it could be partially due to the salt on the roads. Um, all right, we need to we need to turn around here. We gotta get to work. So I'm gonna go this way now. Woo -wee. So it is January. Dang, I don't know. Maybe maybe January 28. I honestly had pretty much written off snow for the year, for the season I should say. Um, I really did not think it was gonna snow, and I think I jinxed myself. Ah, oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize to whoever didn't want snow this season because I must have jinxed us. I did it, I jinxed us. <laughs> oh well. It's not all bad, it's just, uh, it's actually kind of fun, really. Um, like I said, for a while, and then it gets old. Kind of fast. But it is certainly pretty, right? Look at all the trees with the snow on them. Otherwise, the trees just are completely... Well, they are dormant, but uh, well, they're non-evergreens, at least. So, the snow certainly adds a little bit of flair to them. Versus just looking completely dead. And dormant. Oh. oh my. You know what? I just realized. <laughs> oh man. Oh dang. Video editing. Shucks. I just realized I don't have the speedometer on the screen. I can do that though. I can put the speedometer on the screen here. I'm gonna get off the road first. Okay. So I can put the speedometer on the screen. It's just uh, whew, now that I'm already through the, into the video, editing this in is gonna be a little bit of a hassle. But that's okay. That's okay. We can do this. Oh wait a minute. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? Let's cancel out of here. Get me out of here. All right, so no speedometer this episode, sorry. 
uh, my speed sensor is actually on my Wahoo speed sensor is actually on my other bikes um, so just thinking about it right now I could maybe do GPS speed you know that is use a, use an app and not use a speed sensor um, I think the speed sensor is a little more accurate and I prefer accuracy over just giving you wild numbers um, speed sensor is also good for cases where you're going out of range of a satellite like under trees and through tunnels and stuff but um so yeah I don't yeah I don't think I'll have speed in this episode so I apologize for that I had everything together and it was like oh one thing I forgot to hit record on <laughs> but then I realized oh I don't even have a speed sensor on this bike because I don't use this bike that often but I'm gonna have to fix that I'm gonna have to fix that in the future Oh, because I actually have two speed sensors now, but I have more than two bikes, so <laughs> I have my speed sensors on my other bikes right now. Sir, so, oh well. I'll tell you this much though, you really don't need speed with this bike because honestly, I'm going slow. You know, we're talking 10 miles per hour or so. I got studded tires, this bike with all the gear on it, and uh, the studded tires, of course. Um, you know, all the all the you know the fenders and all these cameras. This bike weighs close to 40 pounds, so and there's ice on the well, there's ice in some parts of the ground, so I'm really not going that fast. I have no need to go that fast, so I can tell you right now, my speed is probably about. 10 to 12 miles per hour. I could go a little faster. I crank it up here, just a little. But, uh, you know, now I'm going maybe 15 or so miles per hour. It's a constant battle with these studded tires. And if you missed it earlier, the uh, kind of the crunching noise you hear, hopefully it's not too annoying. That is the studded tires on the bike. It's the little spikes rolling on the ground um, you can reduce the noise by the way another tip of the day you can reduce the noise of studded tires and also reduce your traction a little <laughs> by increasing your air pressure so if the studded tires are pumped up closer to the maximum recommended pressure you'll they'll roll easier they'll also slip easier but they'll also be quieter won't be quite as loud I'm going around this guy, but he looks like he's just about to get started up again here. So, hopefully I got around in time. Ah. Yeah, it's that time of year again. You need to be cleaning, on, cleaning up your bike. And uh, I think my rear brake is rubbing on this bike. So this bike has been a little bit neglected. So, another public service announcement is take care of your bikes. They'll take care of you. Let's head this way. Woo. Oh my gosh, it's cold. So more about bike fit. Bike fit. It's actually snowing a little bit. There's little flurries. Hopefully they're not. Looks like the screen is pretty clear. Woo -wee. So bike fit is especially important once you dial in your favorite, you know, position on the bike. You know, it feels good. I guess I should give you some actual tips on bike fit, right? Not just dimensions. I was helping you out earlier in the video with, uh, uh, let's go keep going straight here. Oh, wow, look at that. They actually plowed the bike lane here. I mean, as much as you could expect. Not bad. Not bad, St. Louis, Missouri. I actually think I want to go left here. Nobody behind me. Some of these side streets may be a little more dangerous. But yeah, bike fit. Ugh. When, your knee, when your leg is fully extended, you know, when you're at the bottom of the stroke on the pedal, your knee should be ever so slightly bent. 
you know, it shouldn't be fully extended or, or whatever. The, I don't know what the technical anatomical term is, but you know, beyond fully extended. You don't want to be that far. Just a slight bend in the knee. Let's go right. And, uh, woo -hoo. and uh, for your reach, that's really kind of up to you and your flexibility when it comes to reach. Because, uh, and I honestly mix it up. So I might have to adjust actually the crop on the camera stuff here for, whoops, getting into the slush. I'm gonna go left here and go down the alleyway. The alleyway's somewhat plowed. Um, on this bike, I have almost no reach. That is, I'm like pretty cramped up on the bike. It's not really a weird feeling, it's just kind of cramped up. Although I am sitting up, you know, straight up kind of like this, so I can see better. That just kind of goes with the territory of uh, a mountain bike um, handlebars, the flat handlebars. Um, normally I have a road bike and I'm kind of laying out forward, leaning down more, and I'm stretched out more. So the big thing with that is it makes you more aerodynamic, so when you're going above, you know, 14, 15 miles per hour, uh, the equivalent metric would be, um, I don't know, about 20 kilometers per hour. Uh, um, but uh, I'd say, you know, you're gonna get more aerodynamic, but you know, you only would do that if, you know, you're comfortable in that position. You know, you're flexible enough that, you know, I don't even stay in that position. I, I move my position around all the time. I'm always twitching around on my bike. And that could be an indication that I have a poor bike fit. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of bikers probably don't realize they could be a lot more efficient on the bike if they had a, you know, had their bike fit dialed in a little better. Um, so, my tip of the day was just kind of to get you to that point where, you know, you're feeling like you kind of, uh, let's go left. Where you're feeling like you kind of, uh, you know, you got it down. You kind of feel like you're uh, able to go from one bike to another and not feel completely different on each bike in terms of the bike fit, the geometry. Um, now, I suppose, actually, you want your bike fit to be a little different on a mountain bike versus a road bike. So what I was kind of referring to was you know, how to dial in your fit between road bikes um, really quickly, you know, roughly speaking. It'll get you in the ballpark, which is pretty good, although when we're talking about cycling, every millimeter can be a big difference. So you gotta really carefully measure your, uh, I talked about this previously about metric units and English units. You wanna be measuring everything in metric or you probably should be. I mean, I'll just say it's easier for me to use metric units because you can get more precise with, you know, round numbers, uh, semi-round numbers, at least to the tenth of a decimal point, versus, you know, English, which you're using fractions and stuff, which if you're comfortable with doing that, then it's cool. I mean, it doesn't matter. They're just two different systems. It is, I find metric easier to work with. Easier to memorize things too. Woo! Look at that sun. Actually, don't look at the sun. It's probably bad for your eyes. <laughs> don't stare at the sun. Don't be stupid. <laughs> it is a pretty landscape though. The sun uh, glistening on the uh, road here. Just a little annoying with all the loud cars to my left. But otherwise, pretty, pretty, pretty. Woo. So what tire pressure am I riding right now on this bike? Yeah, I know we, I kind of already talked about bike fit. If you want to know more, leave a comment in the section below and I'll try to answer it. Or some, some other uh, cyclist will try to answer it for you. Um, some people may be wondering what my air pressure is. I think the maximum on these studded tires is closer to 75. PSI. Woo. Loud. And like I said, there's uh, 
not apparently a lot of snow on the ground. So my air pressure is around 70 PSI or a little lower. Um, depending on the weight of yourself plus all your gear and I guess your bike to some extent. Um, you can go down further, you know. I, I probably go down to 60 PSI and not really lose much of any puncture resistance, you know, to getting a flat tire. Um, they give me more grip, but like I said, with these studded tires, I get more drag. And I don't know if that's the correct technical term. I get more friction, I get more uh, resistance. I don't know. I don't know what the technical term is, but it'd be harder to pedal forward. It'd be, well, it'd be more energy expended may not feel apparently harder but over a long course of time over a half hour an hour plus you know I, I would probably start to see a difference Whew. it's not really snowing anymore I mean I see a couple flurries I kind of wonder sometimes when I see flurries though if it's like <laughs> no, no, no. not acid rain or whatever no it's if it's like uh you know, if there's uh, snow just blowing off of trees or something, but there's not really any trees out here in the, on this street, so I think it is just a little bit of flurries right now. Oh man, this is a torn up road. Okay. On our way to work today. On our way to work today. Woo -wee. Oh man, it's like who patched that? <laughs> it's just so weird how inconsistent the patch jobs are on these roads. I guess it's just a variety of different contractors or something, I don't know. It's like sometimes they use concrete, sometimes they don't. Maybe the city has a specification for that, I don't know. Let's go to the right. Nobody coming, so we'll just keep going. Ugh. Oh, well, there's a lot of cars coming from the other direction. I'm gonna take a turn here, change lanes and cross over real quick. Kind of do it all at once there. Oh my, just a beautiful snowy day today. Beautiful snowy day. So I hope this little tip of the day helped you a little with bike fit. I'm gonna repeat myself one more time here, very simply, to drive it on home. Measure the top of the saddle to the floor. Measure the top of your handlebars to the floor. Subtract those numbers, that gives you your drop. At least what bike blogger likes to call a drop. Technically, is that a drop? I don't know, but that's what I call a drop. So that's what we're gonna say. <laughs> and then, um, Number three, measure from the tip of your saddle or any, any point, you know, consistently. Measure from your saddle to, uh, to your brake levers. Not necessarily your handlebars, but your brake levers, because that's where you need to be able to reach. You gotta be able to stop. Woo! All right, almost at work now. So drop and reach. Drop and reach. DR. Drop and reach. Doctor. DR. Drop and reach. So just remember that. And you'll be golden. Like a gold medal for you. For watching this one through. On the butt vlog of shoe. Shoe? Show. <laughs> Stay warm out there. Thanks for watching like this video we'll see you in the next video Woo, what's this guy doing he's spinning around okay we're safe we're safe we're cool it's all good bike vlogger it's all good